because what you've been doing here is, is playing this game and we have all of this like informal language here, right? But informal language only takes you so far. And so we want to develop like every time you learn a new branch of mathematics, you introduce new terms, new language, so you can describe things in more detail and more precisely. Okay. So a lot of these words will sound familiar to you, which well, I hope they sound familiar to you. And if not, that's why we're reviewing them. Okay. So let's begin at the top here with what we call an event or an outcome. Right? So do you remember I said to you, um, algebra is the mathematics of unknown numbers and probability is the mathematics of uncertain events. So all this means is something that can happen and you can know whether it happened or whether it didn't. Right? So for instance, an event here would be something like I rolled a three. That's something you can know it happened or it didn't. Um, it's an event, it's an outcome, and I want to distinguish between different kinds of events or outcomes. So for instance, um, I asked you right at the beginning, what's the probability of winning? Okay. Now, the minimum number of turns it takes, or the minimum number of rolls of the die it takes to win is five rolls, right? Um, I know Chris did a five roll win. Did anyone else get a five roll win? Anyone else got one, two, three, four, and five all more go? That's all right. A win, right? It's pretty close, it's very good too. Winning the game is what we would call a multi-stage event. Right? Do you see why? Because several things all need to happen. There are multiple stages and that winning is made up of, that event is made up of all of those other ones. Or of course you could have one, what I mentioned before, like rolling a three, that's a single event. Okay. So there's nothing else that um, affects that, it's just like done, one, one single thing. Okay. So events can be single or they could be multi-stage. In addition, they can be independent or dependent, right? Now, does anyone remember what these mean? Can we come up with like some synonyms or phrases that would mean the same thing? What do you reckon? Let's start with independent. What would it mean if I said two events were independent? Separate. Separate's a good one. What was the one you used? Like um, exclusive and inclusive. Yeah, it's related to that. Let me. We can use all those words. I'll stay with the um, separate was the idea. Yeah. So if you've got separate events, right? It's like, uh, where did my, where my dice go? So if I roll these two dice, right? They're both blue, that's not very helpful. If I roll the blue and the blue, okay? These are separate things, right? Me rolling this one and me rolling this one, they don't have any effect on each other. Do you agree? So therefore we would call them independent events. They don't have any effect one or the other, okay? That's fine. Therefore, if I ask, for example, what's the probability of getting killed on any individual turn, right? Um, Oh. Okay. In the game. <laughs> um, what's the probability of rolling a six? Okay. Now every time you roll, there's a chance of getting a six, right? Is the chance independent each time, or is it dependent? Does the previous roll affect your chance of getting a six the next time? It's independent, right? Because every time it's like, well, you know, the first time you roll and the 100th time you roll, presumably they're the same kind of roll, right? So they're independent, it's one in six, 16%-ish, every single time, okay? As opposed to dependent events, right? So these are about, um, does the past affect the future? So do you remember, was there anyone who got to a point where they're like, I just need to rescue one person? Right? I just need to rescue one. And then you keep on rolling and it takes you forever to get that last person. Did you notice that? Right? Yeah. Now just think about this, right? This event, rescuing the last person, I'll just say last person. Rescuing the last person takes you forever compared to rescuing the first person. Do you agree? Like, what's the chance of you rescuing someone on the first turn? Just think about it. It's five out of six, right? Because it doesn't matter which of the rolls, so long as you don't roll a six, you'll rescue someone, right? Whereas, to get the last person, that's the first person, do you see why that's a dependent event? Do you see why it's dependent? It's because the past, what you've rolled before affects it, right? So it's like, I'm just waiting for that three, right? That's the last one I need. And you keep on rolling ones and twos and fours, and you're like, oh, this is a pain because of what's happened in the past, right? So depending on the way you describe an event, that will make it independent or dependent, okay? Right, let's keep moving through. We kept on saying out of six, out of six, out of six. This is what we refer to as sample space. Can someone describe to you what sample space is? Sample space. Good question. 
the size of the sample space for a die is six, the size of the sample space. That's um, how many faces there are, right? So the definition of sample space is all the events or outcomes that are possible, all the possible events. If it can happen, it's in the sample space. Okay. So for example, seven is not in the sample space for any of these dice, okay? because it's not possible. It's not part of the sample space. And so six is the only number of things you can happen. So the size of the sample space is six. The sample space itself is um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Does that make sense? So we might even write that down. EG one, two, three, six. So please note, I wouldn't say the sample space is six. I'd say that the size of the sample space is six. That's how many items there are in there. It could be like A, B, C, D, E, F. The size would still be the same, okay? All right, at last, even though it's like our heading, now we're actually ready to give a proper formal definition for what probability is, okay? You would say something like, uh, we use the letter P rather than writing probability every single time. The probability of something, of rolling a three, dying, you know, winning the game, okay? Any event you like. So the way I read this is the probability of event E, and I can put anything into E I like, right? Is equal to the events that you want, we call them the favorable events, like rescuing someone, that's a favorable event. The number of favorable events divided by the size of the sample space, right? Because that's how many different things could happen. So you guys were all using that understanding as we were talking, even without the formal definition, because you're like, oh, favorable events for, say, getting caught by Voldemort. There's one of them. There's only one way to get caught by Voldemort. And what's the size of the sample space? Well, it's six. There it is, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So that fraction is the one we're going to be using over and over again. And it's where things like this come from, right? 25% or 75% or 100 Right? How would we write each of these as fraction?s What's twenty five percent as a fraction? Whatever. That's one over four. Very good. Um, this would be three over four, I guess. A um, hundred percent. What does percent mean again? Out of a hundred. So a hundred out of a hundred is just one. one. Uh, and then you've got things like fifty fifty. Well, that's fifty percent. That's what it's shorthand for. So fifty out of a hundred is, of course, a uh half. -huh. Right? So you got this spectrum from zero all the way to one, which means impossible or certain, and all the numbers in between. Does that make sense? Okay, so just lastly, I will just quickly draw a couple of these for you. Um, you don't have to put too much detail here because you've got some in your text and you're gonna, you're gonna join them yourself. Tables and tree diagrams, they're just tools <laughs> to visualize what's happening for the probability. So let me draw some for you, right? Just as examples, okay? If I ask you to um, roll the dice just twice, just twice, okay? And all I'm interested in is, do you get caught by Voldemort or not, right? I could draw a tree diagram like this, okay? I could roll a six, or I could not roll a six. Now, we've got a special little symbol that means not. I'll talk about this symbol a bit more in a couple of lessons time, next term, actually. Um, this is a fancy, we have a fancy word for this, it's called the complement. So this means not six. What's the probability of rolling a six again? Can you tell me again? It's one out of six, right? So I would label that part of the tree. And that means the probability over here is gonna be five out of six, right? Now one of the things you'll notice is if you have a look at all the branches possible and you have a look at all the numbers. I mean, we could have had like more branches if we wanted to. You can see that all of the branches have to add up to one because they cover all of the things that could happen. Does that make sense? So this is just one pair of branches. That's a bit boring. You can draw more. Six, not six, six, not six. And you can keep on going. And it's worth pointing out, in this example, this actually wouldn't exist, this one here, because what happens when you roll a six? You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. So the game is over, okay? So really, this branch would just keep on going down this way. But again, you can calculate the probabilities. You told me that it was independent every time. So it's still going to be a sixth every time you roll, and this will still be five sixths. Does that make sense? Which, by the way, explains why it gets harder and harder. As you keep on rolling not sixes, you're going to get five sixths and five sixths, and all of these multiply together, because you want all of them at the same time. Okay, um, and you need a tree. So... 
if you have, I ask you to get two dice each, right? If you roll these two dice, you can represent all the different ways of all the different combinations of two dice in a table like this. You don't need to draw um, all of it, but you can simply do it like this. One, two, three, four. Uh, there we go. So, oh, no, I need one more. Sorry, guys. So you could have a table. One side represents one of the dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the other side will represent the other die. Three, four, five, six. And what you'll have is a grid, and you can, you'll see these in your textbook. Sometimes they put dots here, which is why this kind of table is often called a, does anyone know? When it's got dots in it. It's called a dot diagram sometimes. Even when there aren't dots there, they still sometimes call it a dot diagram, which is a bit mysterious. Each one of these dots represents an event, right? Um, for example, this one would be rolling a one and a one. That's a pair of ones, okay? Or this one here would be rolling a four and then a three, okay? So these are just tools you can use. 